Hi, this is Larry Jordan. This is an excerpt from a recent power-up webinar taking a look at cool effects inside Final Cut Pro 10. In this excerpt, I'll show you how to create a picture-in-picture -picture effect. Let's try something different. Let's do... Oh, picture-in-picture. -picture. All right, let's try this. So here I've got a gradient. The gradient is, comes from generators. And I just went and selected the gradient. One of the cool things about the gradient is you can grab these dots and change the angle of the gradient to make it look whatever angle you want. We'll make it go at an angle. Select the gradient, go up to the generator menu, and you can change the colors of the two gradients. I like this. This is a nice, flexible gradient that allows us to customize in a variety of ways. We want to create a picture-in-picture. Picture. Well, by now you know that to have multiple images on screen at the same time requires stacking the images one on top of the other. I'm going to select the up clip, go to the Transform menu, scale it down, and we'll say, mm, let's make it 55%. We'll turn on the controller. This Clicking this icon here is the same as clicking the Transform icon over in the low left corner of the viewer, making the browser appear and disappear is control command one and let's just drag this over to about there and we'll click done now that is a beautiful thing tears tears are pouring from my eyes be nice if it had sort of a postcard look maybe we could add a border to this so we'll go to the effects menu and add a border we'll just search for border there it is and drop a simple border on top and there it is. It selects the color white. We'll make it just a little bit broader. Make it a little bit wider. By the way, if you click the arrow part, you can see the motion color picker. If you click the color chip part, you see the standard Macintosh color picker. So depending upon where you click on that, it'll change. That's kind of a nice postcard photograph. Hmm. Needs a drop shadow, though. So let's go back to the effects, and let's look for the word drop. Take the drop shadow, drop it on top of the clip. And this is really neat. With the drop shadow, we can twirl it open. We can look at a classic drop shadow, or we can set it to a perspective back. Notice how the drop shadow falls to the back. If I grab this blue dot, I can change the perspective and stretch it all around to indicate which way the light is moving, or change this to perspective front, and now the drop shadow falls in front. Cool, but highlight it, hit the delete key. I've got this bright sun in the picture. What would happen if, control command one, what would happen if I added something, oh, let's do, oh, this is a good one. We'll grab that one, give ourselves some room here, and in, out, Q, and we've added this clip. Go to the transform menu, let's set it to around 35%. And there is a picture on top of my picture. I'm going to grab the Transform controls, shift T, by the way, as a keyboard shortcut. And look at that bright sun. It'll... Well, wait a minute. There's no relationship between the bright sun. What, what I really need is I need a drop shadow on this top picture. Throw this to be perspective front. Grab this slider, throw it this way. Make the, there we go. Increase the blur. Increase the blur fall off. Look at that. The bright sun in this picture is casting a drop shadow from this picture because the foreground picture is obviously in front of the sun and it should have a shadow. <laughs> you can have as many pictures on top of pictures as you want. You can stack them up. Uh, the most I've ever done is 31, to be truthful. But that was because I was doing a calendar application. I had a piece of video in for each day of the calendar. But the sun here makes this drop shadow make perfect sense. It doesn't make sense to have a drop shadow where the sun is. Sun doesn't cast a shadow. But other objects in front of the sun do cast a shadow.
and we can control the perspective of the shadow by grabbing these handles and dragging. Now, the, the shadow going that way, that's stupid. Sun doesn't cast a shadow at an angle to itself. There we go. Much nicer. And can we keyframe the shadow? Let's just see. I think we can add a keyframe. So we'll add a keyframe here, and we'll drag this over to there, and we'll play it. You can have the sun move, and as the sun moves, the shadow can move with it. Is that not cool? Neat stuff. This has been an excerpt of a recent Power Up webinar taking a look at cool effects inside Final Cut Pro 10. For the complete version of this online training, please visit our store at LarryJordan.com slash store and look for Webinar 154. By the way, membership is a great value when you need to stretch your training dollars. A subscription membership to our video training library saves you money. You can access all of our videos for a low monthly price of only $19.99. That's more than 1,200 movies, hundreds of hours of training, all in-depth and all up-to-date. Plus, members can attend any of our Power Up webinars for free. Our training covers Apple and Adobe software. We update it every week. And for more information, visit LarryJordan.com slash membership. And thanks.